see the quick commerce is a i mean it's a revolution i mean india is the place where delivery should happen there is a highest competitive edge i mean the lowest cost of delivery is possible only in india because this two wheeler the guys are matlab affordable then you can so i think when it's a very dense uh, population in cities and we have a lot of population so i think for 50 60 bucks you can have a profitable delivery which is less than a dollar nowhere in the world it is possible to deliver in uh, 10 minutes for 60 bucks so i mean now and uh, if you and me have to go and pick up uh, stuff i think it's a lot of pain in the sense that uh, you have to park your car you have to you have to go to for three things for a uh, say uh, bakery and then the grocery and then uh, uh, pharmacy or you have to go to as many shops here in one click you get everything and that in 10 minutes before you can even go to the car so i think uh, and price is also competitive so my sense is this is a changing the consumption pattern in every household not only top end across everybody is looking for convenience so i think that's where uh, i think this is a big revolution and it's a trillion dollar kind of an opportunity in that even there is a 10% transition we are in next 7 8 years i think you are looking at 50 to 100 billion dollar kind of a uh, uh, fmcg plus plus uh, whatever they are going to deliver it's a evolving category it's a revolutionary kind of a thought process now they are not making money which i don't like they, they should be making money you know zomato has shown some profit making but i think blinket sorry swiggy and uh, zepto zepto is an early stage so i think we have to see all these warriors when they make money but very promising field uh, for uh, money making today we are at 4 trillion dollars and growing at the same pace and of we are still a young country and young country so in next 25 30 years when you have full demographic dividend and we go from we are growing at about 9% dollar so every 7 year 8 uh, years we double so uh, in 32 in 32 years you get four doublers so 2 4 8 16 so 16 x to the current so you have a potential to go to 65 trillion from 4 trillion wow. so I, I, that's the power of compounding yeah, and the maths when it is yeah. so i'll move forward now we discuss the samvat year gone by now the current samvat first question which everybody wants to perhaps understand from you the starting point is today considering the last 3 years have been great you enumerated the returns for next 3 to 5 years i'm not using one year what should be the return expectation from equities always have a fixed rate 15% it's a wonderful rate to have this is a 15% country i'm telling you i mean 40 years 30 years 25 years you do it it's all anywhere between 14 to 15% you know even 5 years uh, post covid 5 uh, years pre covid just about 9 to 24 it is 111% for last 5 years so it works at about 16% so the moment you do 5 5 years uh, you are you are set you will be about 14 to 16% you know so if you think market is high you might make 14% if you think market is low see market goes down by another 10 to 15% you are set for 16% kind of return but next 3 to 5 years the cagr to your mind now whether it is 11 or 15 that's the base effect and that's the market cycle impact but the probability of getting double digit returns on a cagr basis the next 3 to 5 years from equities is reasonably high now let me do, now you as about probability next year 15% return probability i have no idea it can be zero it can be uh, i mean it can be anywhere it's a toss of coin 50 50 okay you go to say 5 years double digit return with a 10% plus i would say 90% chance okay if you go to 10 years 10 years 14 15% return like probability is like 98 99% okay great second i'll move to what defines return ultimately is growth and earnings we've discussed india's gdp growth you've given us the numbers let's understand earnings for the second quarter on the trot now earnings are down the slow down is visible you can smell it and you can feel it do you think this is a temporary blip in earnings will earnings revive and if they will revive what will drive the earnings yeah so i mean people who are know of things i'm not a macro guy so i i keep hearing the chief economic advisor or RBI or our FM, whatever they say, we have to because they are they are talking from data and their understanding of things and they are going to make things happen. So RBI just said that uh, they still stick to seven percent kind of growth projection. They are the guys who are doing the numbers. They are the economists on the ground and everything. So they are saying that first half was impacted by weather and all sorts of things and also election. 
so that slowed down the government expenditure big time okay so i think second half will be best of government expenditure and private capex, uh, capex whatever it has to pick up and consumption so all i mean all cylinder should fire in second half so i would say q3 and q4 should significant should be better than q uh, first first half of the earnings that's what is being uh, touted by uh, you know kind of uh, regulators or people who know of things so clearly second second half should be better and then it should pick up so a lot of things are going to happen in the sense that policy decisions will happen why should we think that nothing will move rate cycle is all over the world it is coming down okay uh, rbi is saying that they will not make a hasty move right now but direction is very clear maybe if not in this two months then after four months five months it will happen acha your inflationary pressure which is there right now is also going to subside as the fruits and vegetables come uh, post uh, is diwali and all so i would think that uh, the earnings outlook i think this is the worst we are if it is 6-7% maybe it will be 10-12% for the second half and then from there we'll take it as a lower rate cycle lower uh, crude prices i mean us election will be behind trump will be there to stop both the wars so world be far more peaceful so 